Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Process Pro Engine Specification Software. Thank you for joining us. My name is Amanda Harmoning. I am an admin assistant here at AERA, and I will be moderating today's event. Uh, joining me from the AERA team are Rob Monroe and Steve Fox. Hey, everyone. Yeah, Rob Monroe here. I look after membership and technical development over here at AERA. And today's presentation, I'll be looking after, and it'll be the Process Pro software. Welcome, everybody. My name is Steve Fox. I'm the Vice President of Operations here at AERA, as well as work on the tech line. <clears throat> and like Rob said, I'll be in the background answering any questions that you may have. So I want you to keep in mind that a lot of you have Process Pro that are on the webinar today. And you know that, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be times that you're going to use us in the tech department to find you some information. And what we do, we really do encourage that. That's why you've got membership. And there are definitely going to be times where you're going to find that the information that you're looking for won't be in Process Pro because maybe you're looking for us to help you with uh, some failure analysis. You know, maybe you've got a set of bearings that you want to have us to have a look at. Uh, you've had a failure and you want us to check those out for you. This is the type of information that we can help out with. You know, things like injection pump timing for you know a large diesel engine that you're working on. Or, you know, maybe you're looking for some, uh, you know, more than just specs. Maybe you're trying to assemble an engine that came to you in a box and uh, you're looking for as many pictures or something to help you put that engine back together. This is all stuff that we can help you with. So again, we do encourage you to use us here in the tech department. There are five of us. We are open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. You can phone us, you can fax us, you can email us. In a few minutes here, when we get to live screen on process, I'm gonna show you a little trick little shortcut that you can go ahead and use to have uh, access right to our desk. You can basically go right from Process Pro and have access to us in the tech department that way too. So keep that in mind for sure. All right, one last slide here and uh, I'm gonna get to live screen. Kind of a cool build that we got on the go right now. Mike Mavergan, who does a lot of our engine builds for us, has just put together a 540 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. So. This is for our Engine Rebuilders Educational Foundation. All proceeds from this go right back into training. Um, you know, so if we, we have our Educational Foundation, which you can have scholarships and grants. We have those accessible to students and as well as our members to use for their employees for, for future training and education. So this, this blah, I mean, it's dark components, comp cams, there's melling. Uh, we've got some goods and stuff in there. Really cool build. Uh, this is definitely going to look good in somebody's project here. And we're doing the drawing for that at our booth at PRI in Indianapolis in December. So all you need to do for tickets for that one, they're 10 for $20. You can either go to our website, the information's right there on our homepage, or you can call Karen at 815-526-7346 and she'll get a hold, she'll be able to look after that for you. So um, like I say, great program there. Also, I mean, within the U.S., once we're finished with it at PRI, we ship it to you right within the continental U.S. So the winner of that will get that thing right on their front doorstep within about a week of PRI. So, again, buy some tickets for that one. It's for a good cause, and it, it will definitely go right back into education and training. All right, so Process Pro, um, before we get started here, just a little bit of a background on it. Uh, we've been doing this uh, Process Pro. It's been in the works for nearly 30 years. We have 11,000 engines in Process Pro, and uh, it's it's we grow that we 20 to 30 engines almost every week, and uh, you know it it's it's growing. We have a lot of engines in there that we you know we have a lot of international members, and it just surprises us on the tech department how many engines we get manuals for that we've never heard of here in North America, and uh, the list is just growing and growing. So you know to have that many engines, you know over 11,000 within Process Pro. And it's just, like I say, growing uh, week by week. So very proud of that. And uh, all of us here at the Techs, I mean, that's our daily job is if, if some of you from overseas, if you don't see an engine that you're looking for in Process Pro, then by all means, shoot us an email and, uh, and let us know and we'll find that manual. And again, that's why you have membership. Let us do that work for you. We'll find the manual and uh, we'll see if we can get that information and then we'll get it to you as well as upload it to Process Pro. For those of you that are using Process Pro, uh, when you first log on, this is the screen that you're going to see. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and cover every aspect I can of Process Pro. I'll try and go not too fast. 
a lot to cover. If you've never used it, don't be discouraged. Uh, it's like any software program. You just need to practice a little bit, and it is really easy to use once you get onto it. The other thing, too, is that we don't mind helping you in the tech department. So if you've got a question, we don't mind setting aside a few minutes to make sure that you're, you can use Process Pro and take advantage of it. We, we want you to use it and, and have full use of it. It's like any tool. I mean, no sense having it sit in your toolbox when you're only using, you know, you're only using part of that socket set. We want you using the whole thing. So we can do that and help you with Process Pro. When you first log on, we call this the dashboard. And the reason why we call it the dashboard is you're basically in the driver's seat now to control every part of the program. So essentially, this is like Process Pro's homepage, if you want to call it. And once you're there, you know, there's basically, it breaks it up into three sections. So right here is, is all the tabs that we can do some quick functions with. We have our search criteria. This is where we'll enter our engine information. Any events coming up, you know, we'll put any kind of that kind of info right here in the middle. So we have, you know, you could go directly to our magazine. You know, we're talking about today's webinar or any a conference and events that we've got coming up, as well as our online training program. There's a direct link there. Down near the bottom, these are some of our, our manufacturers that are members and some of the suppliers, and you can go directly to their website right from here as well. So um, the other thing that we do is basically right at the bottom, uh, this is what, what will this will highlight what information we've just put into the program, so it lets you know what's new as well. So one of the first things you're going to do when you get Process Pro is you're going to want to look up an engine, of course. That that's the first thing that you want to cover. So really, really simple, and I'll, I'll word it. We call it the rule of three. Too much information, all it's going to do is confuse Process Pro. If you try to fill out every single one of these boxes, you're going to narrow your search down so far that you're probably not going to find what you're looking for. What we like to see you do, you have to go the make. So you're going to choose the make, whatever manufacturer you're working on. Choose the engine size and choose the year. Those three are going to be your, your recipe to have the best result for engine search. If you're doing an industrial engine, honestly, you only need to go two. Choose the make. You know, let's say Caterpillar, for example, and industrial engines are excellent with really good engine codes. So as an example, and if I, I'll just show you here real quick, if I choose Caterpillar, well, we know that industrial engines aren't necessarily year specific. So just choose the two. So choose Caterpillar and then do your engine code and do your lookup that way. If we're working on an automotive or a gas engine, do it this way. Let's go Ford, for example, as a make. And let's choose two liter as an engine size. And let's go 2012 as a year. So that's basically the three, three things I'd like you to put into Process Pro, the rule of three. And go ahead and search that. So once you search that, Process Pro is basically going to look for every two liter engine in 2012 for Ford. And right there, it's showing that there's 10 results. So a lot of different models in 2012 had this two liter engine. And I'd much rather see 10 results than none. And like I say, I mean, if you get all crazy and start going model and VIN and all that, the reason is, is that, again, keep in mind, uh, this program is used worldwide. So the model, let, let's say a Ford Focus over here in North America may be called something completely different over in Australia or in the UK. So you got to keep in mind, don't put the model in because... The engine is the same. The engine's universal. You know, this two liter engine is in all the models around the world, but not necessarily in the same model. So that's kind of why we encourage you to do it that way. So of these 10 engines, here's what we're looking at. Now we can go through and pick which particular model we're working on, a year range. You know, we can have a look and see exactly and narrow it down to which one, you know, I, that we're working on. The other thing that you can pay attention to is over here, we give you a little bit more information and we show you, you know, this INTFR. Well, what that is short for is interference. It's letting you know right here before you go any further if that engine is interference or not, or whether those valves are going to smack the pistons if that timing belt breaks. So red, of course, means, you know, stop. Yes, you know, it, it's, it's a problem. Those valves are going to tag and they're going to be an issue. Yellow, this is, means that we're not sure yet. We still don't know if that engine is a problem. We haven't heard otherwise. And then of course, if you see a green circle, that means we do know that it is a freewheeling engine and that there is no issues and, uh, and you'd be okay. So watch for those circles, that's what those mean. 
then you've got a thumbtack, a wrench, and a camera. The thumbtack is telling you that there are technical bulletins within that particular engine lookup. The wrench is telling you that there's procedures, like maybe something like a, a timing procedure or injection tube installation or something like that. And the camera is letting you know that there are diagrams within that engine lookup. So if we go down to, let's say, uh, you know, this Transit Connect, well, we've got one technical bulletin, one procedure, and 10 diagrams. You literally can go ahead and just click that, and it'll take you right to those diagrams without even going into the engine. So those are shortcuts that you can do. So once you cover your mouse over top of the one that you want, you can see it kind of goes gray. If you go ahead and click that, and it will open up now to the specifications page so that you have access to every bit of information we've got for this Ford 2 liter from 2012 to 14 in a Transit Connect. So what we're looking at is it, it gives a little bit of a breakdown of, uh, of, of bore and stroke. So that's like, like a quickie lookup, if you want to call it. And then we've got all our specifications tabs here. So this is where you're going to go to look up the connecting rod, the camshaft, any torque specs. All those are right there along that line. So it will always default when you first open it to the cylinder head. And so what we can do is we can scroll down and we've got any of our casting information, so thicknesses, we have our valve information there, valve seat, valve guide, valve spring. We'll go all the way down to the bottom and that's where we'll get our, our lash. Uh, it'll let you know the cylinder head torque as well as camshaft torque. So all of that information is right there uh, within that lookup under that tab. If we go to cylinder block, same thing. You've got your bore diameters, you know, skirt clearances. Uh, if we have it, this is where you'll find your piston to rod orientation. You'll look there as well as you'll look in diagrams. So there's a couple options there. Um, so that you'll look there. Crankshaft, pretty self-explanatory. You know, you'll find your rod and main journal diameters, your journal widths. Uh, thrust information and play information, that's all under that crankshaft tab right there. Connecting rod, big housing bores, this is where your pin bushing information will be, so that'll all be there. And you've got camshaft, and uh, again, end plays, journal oil clearances, we'll put the gear, like the bolt torque will be in there. And one of the more common ones that you'll probably use will be torque and tune-up. And what that is, is that, that basically is telling you um, all the torque specs, and the reason why I say the one you use the most is, this is one where, let's say your customers just come to pick up their cylinder heads, they're paying the bill. I used to actually print this one out and have it sitting there ready to go so that you know you're always getting that phone call, you know, an hour later after they picked up the heads and they're like, oh, forgot to ask you, hey, what is the head torque on that particular cylinder head? Uh, and can you maybe shoot me the, uh, you know, the, the torque schematic so I can have a look at how to torque them down? So. Rather than, you know, have that call later while you're trying to get something else done, print that off and have it sitting there for them so that when they're paying the bill, you know, they've got their credit card out and you can just hand them the, the torque specs and all that stuff and they're, they're super happy. They, they can have a look and, and see that. So torque and tune-up is, is, that's like I say, the one more common tab that you'll probably use for that kind of stuff. Then we have this tab right here and this is our procedures tab. And this is actually a fairly new function for us. Um, so this is a, a, a new thing. And what you'll see in there is stuff that we don't have room for, you know, in the diagram section or in the technical bulletin section, something that's pretty wordy, for example. So on this two liter Ford Transit um, Connect, the timing chain, remove and install. So if I click that, I mean, this is literally a five page document of how to time this thing. And this is what we're seeing more and more of in the tech department is, um, you know, questions on how to time these things. And it's not just a dot to dot diagram anymore. It literally is a full procedure like you'd see here. So have a look at that procedures tab. Uh, that's that's in, in process and you'll see it there and it'll tell you it'll be a zero, meaning no procedures or a one or a two. And all of that will be in there. And it's just a matter of going over. And if you want to print them off, you know, hit the print button. Real simple, your print manager will come up and you'll choose you know, which printer to go to. In this case, I'm sending it to a PDF so I can save it to my desktop. And it's just that simple, so really, really easy. Um, once you get out of there, there's a notes tab. And anything notes, meaning a lot of the older engines, we've given some, uh, 
some examples of maybe where to find some parts or maybe, you know, an example of a uh, little more information that we pulled out of a, a particular manual from back in the 30s or 40s or just something that we wanted to make you aware of that you needed to know, you'll find that in that notes tab. So that, that'll be there. So I'm thinking for those of you that are just using Process Pro, this will be like the first thing you needed to know. You needed to how to look up an engine. You kind of needed to go through and figure out what the specs are and, and kind of go from there. So that, that'll kind of get you going and at least get you opening up the information you need to get you started. Once you do that, uh, it's nice now to be able to uh, customize this program a little bit so that you can actually make it looking like it's coming right from your shop, for example. So how we do that is we can, when you go to print something, like I mentioned, you can make it look like it's coming from your shop with your logo, with your address, with all of your contact information. And you do that by, you just go over here to the shop counter tab. And once you click that, you're going to go over here to the shop counter settings. And once you open that, here's where you're going to put your company information. So I would recommend doing this, you know, relatively quickly. Once you get the program, this is one of the first things you probably want to do after you've played around looking up an engine or two, but you can bid it, you know, put your company name, your contact information, all that stuff in there. You can even download your own logo. I mean, we've got the AERA logo there just because this is my version of the program, but I mean, if you literally, for example, uh, like I, I'm sure on my desktop here, I've got a sample. Um, so if we go like, okay, there we go, AERA logo, and I go open. And if I go ahead now and just upload and save, I'm just saving a different logo. I've, I've got an, another AERA logo with a different color, but you might have your shop logo. By doing so, like I say, on a printed document, when you go to give that to your customer, it's looking like it's coming right from your shop. So. I recommend you do that and fill that out and, and take advantage of that. A um, couple other things that you might want to do right away um, is uh, have a look. A lot of times you'll um, want to use some worksheets. So Process Pro has worksheets available that are right in the program. And I'll show you how to use those real quick. So if you go over to the Shop Tools tab, and if you go right here, you've got different options for worksheets. And you can have ones that are that you can download that are print only. And you also have ones that you can edit. And these are really handy to maybe throw in your different departments. So if you've got, you know, like maybe in your cylinder head department, if you download that one, what it looks like is just a process pro sheet that you can go ahead and edit out and fill in your information and print it. So that's an option. But you've also got options with, with ones that we've done for you as well. So maybe you've got like a new engine build, for example, you can literally go ahead and fill this out so it's got your oil clearances, your block information. You might want to use this uh, for in your assembly room so that whoever's putting the engine together can fill out custom, you know, this engine's all finished, it's ready to go, and you can put all this custom information that pertains just to that engine for your customer and, uh, and print that off and have that ready to go. So that, that there will be in Process Pro and uh, you'll, you'll take advantage of that as well. So look for those, that's another new item that we have. And uh, you can, many different options for worksheets that are available there. Now I mentioned to you a way that you can get a hold of us in Process Pro without having to call or fax or email. And we, we, we don't matter what, it doesn't matter. We, we, we prefer you just use whatever's easiest for you. But if you're in Process Pro and you want a direct link right to our tech department, right there is the specifications request. If you click that, it's going to open up and get and basically we just need a little bit of information from you you know what's the make of the engine you're working on uh, are you looking for cylinder head or block or crankshaft information give us a quick note you know if it's something you know maybe you're looking for uh again i mentioned like injection pump timing or you're looking for specs for a uh, uh like a, a flywheel and you you know maybe yours was a really oddball one that that we didn't have information for and you haven't seen it before we'll just put that information in here and go ahead and you know tell us how you want to receive it probably email i you know if you're if you're got a you know if you've got process and you're you're actually able to do spec requests you're probably going to email the you know we'll email back to you and just hit send and uh, generally we get back within 30 minutes so uh, we queue it just like we would a call that we would get over the phone so uh, go ahead and use that spec request it's a handy little feature there for you that uh, you can take advantage of nothing i want to show you 
a really handy feature of Process Pro is, let's say, for example, you just looked up that Ford Transit, and now you're off the computer, you're off answering a phone call, and one of your techs wants to come in and look up an engine on Process Pro. They look it up, they get their Caterpillar information, let's say, for example, but now you've just, you're like, oh, I needed more information for that Ford 2 liter. Well, instead of going and starting all over and going Ford and 2 liter and all that kind of stuff, Process Pro has the ability to remember all the different engines that you previously looked up. And all you need to do is you just need to hit this engine spec tab. So if you click that, what's going to happen is Process Pro is going to think here for a second. And then what it's going to do is it's going to look up all the previous engines. So as you can see, there's that transit, there's that Ford transit that I had looked up previously, and it'll look up any of the engines. You know, I, I was looking up a Suzuki Samurai here earlier, but that's the way to save you some time so you don't have to go through and enter all that information in again. Uh, you just hit that engine spec request and you'll be able to, uh, um, you know, and be able to see that. So really handy. And it's just a matter of going back. If you want to go back to that Ford Transit, you'll click it and you're right back and open again. So we're still looking at that Ford Transit as an example. So now that we've got this open, I've showed you how to look up the engine. Okay, there's some more features now and we've, we've already looked at all the specifications tabs. So that's where our information is gonna be for, for specifications. But within Process Pro, we have technical bulletins, casting numbers, we have diagrams, uh, we've got parts and supplier information. So there's actually, and I'll show you this in a minute, we actually have a link right to our manufacturer's websites that can look up parts for you. So those are all options still within Process Pro. One of the things I want you to look for is, let's say you've got a sonar head in the shop for this Ford Transit, and it's a really good habit to get into the habit of, uh, what I like to do is I like to print the specifications off and any tech bulletins that, about this head, if I've never seen this head before in the shop, I want to know as much information about it as I can before I get started so that I can try and recognize a failure before it happens. So you'll see here, and this is another new feature for us, you've got two options. You've got the cylinder head bulletin, and this is going to take you, if you just click that, it's going to take you right to the one bulletin that we have for this particular uh, cylinder head. So uh, if we cr click on that, and it's talking about a crankshaft pulley, so uh, it's tricking me here just a little bit. But um, if we, how we go back is we go return, and we go return again. It's going to take us back to that lookup, and we also can go in here. Now, there's only one related bulletin um, for this engine, and what you'll see on other engines, and I'll show you this in a minute. If there's more than one bulletin, uh, you might see like 10 or 12 or 14 different bulletins. You're going to click that, and again, it's showing us that crankshaft pulley and you're gonna open it. And there's gonna be diagrams in there, as well as there'll be some wording. And you're gonna to wanna to have a look at that and probably print that off as well, so that your techs can, uh, again, trying to, try to stop a failure before it happens. So it's really simple. You just simply go up to the print screen, you'll hit print. Again, there's your print manager, and you'll go ahead and print it from there. So uh, it'll go ahead and open that for you. Let's go back to the Ford Transit here for a minute. And you'll notice I'm clicking the return to search result rather than clicking my back arrow. And this is the way to go backwards in the program. As you'll find a lot, it, it's a lot easier for the program to go backwards doing it this way than hitting the back arrow. So I encourage you to have a look at that. So that's where your tech bulletins are. That's the thumbtack. Another thing that we can look at, this diagrams tab. So you can see this, the engine spec tab is highlighted blue because that of course means we're in the specs. But if we go to diagrams and we click that, now we've opened up a whole bunch of information within diagrams. And what we've done is we've, we've basically itemized each component with each diagram. So we've got a cylinder head section, block, a torque section, one that we call other, you know, so there was more information in there that we wanted to show you. And once you see the diagram that you want, so you know, let's say you're trying to figure out cylinder head torque. You know, remember I mentioned about that customer probably wanting a, you know, a, a sequence on how to torque those head bolts back up. It's just a matter of going ahead, clicking it. You can hit the print button. It opens up to a larger view for you, and then you can go ahead and print from there. So uh, it's a great way to, uh, to look at the diagrams and, and zoom in there. 
If there's more than one diagram, you know, rather than click one and print and click another and print, it's just a matter of toggling the boxes. You just choose which ones you want to look at or which ones you want to print, put the check marks in them, and uh, you'll click this print all diagrams. And you'll see here all the ones that you've check marked will come up and you'll be able to print those. If you want to print them all, real simple, save a little shortcut here, you know, rather than going click, 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 click. Just hit that box right there, that check all print to thumbnails, and now it's checked them all. And now when you print all diagrams, it'll print every one that we have there. So that's where you can look at diagrams and that kind of stuff. Casting numbers, that's another tab. So right here, um, you can see we've got a block casting number. Now this is something a lot of the manufacturers don't give us. This is not published information. We do rely on our members for casting numbers. So uh, that's why if, if some of the engines, especially a new one like this, you know, we've only just got a block casting number right now. We're still relying on our members to try and give us some of that information so that we can get it uploaded to process. So uh, it's member helping member and, and we rely on all of you to help us. Uh, it's great information. So sometimes when we're talking to you on the tech line and you've got this Ford head up on the bench, you might hear us ask you, hey, uh, can you get us that casting number off that cylinder if you don't mind? And then that's how we get that information uploaded to process. So. Uh, keep that in mind there. And um, um, so that's kind of how you go through cast numbers. Um, all right. Um, I mentioned to you this parts and supplier tab. And I want to show you this. This is a very handy feature uh, to help save you some time. So if we go to dashboard, and this is what I, I you'll notice I'm clicking dashboard. Anytime I want to look up a new engine, you know, if I'm, if I want to go right you know, an engine that I haven't looked up in the last couple of days and I want to start fresh, you'll notice I'm clicking dashboard because that brings me right back to that home screen again and I can start from the beginning. So in this case, let's say I want to look at a John Deere and uh, we'll click that one. And this John Deere I know is about, you know, it's the 239, really common older four cylinder engine for John Deere. And we search that. So once we bring it up, Process Pro is searching, and it's going to bring up all of our John Deere 239s, and there's 10 results there. This allows me to siphon through and figure out which one I'm working on. So let's choose this particular one here, this 4050, this model tractor. And Process Pro is thinking for a second. It'll bring it up. And so right here, again, we've got the same information. We've got all of our speci specifications tabs. We've got our diagrams. We've got our casting numbers. There's two bulletins in this particular one to look up, but you can see right here, highlighted in yellow, meaning there are parts available from some of our member suppliers that can help you with this engine. If you go ahead and click that, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the three suppliers that we have right now that have engines for this 239 John Deere. So to save you from having to actually open up a catalog and go to a different source, you can do this right from Process Pro. So let's say, okay, uh, let's just check out to see what MaxiForce has got. Well, what it's going to do is it's leaving Process Pro, it's going over to MaxiForce, but it's going right to the 4239T John Deere lookup. And from here, you can see where you can go ahead and order the parts you're looking for. And, uh, and again, it, you know, we're not responsible for whether the, we don't know if they have inventory on it. I mean, you're, you're in their site right now. But man, is this a time saver because now you're not opening up another catalog or going to another web browser and entering in the John Deere 239. So it's a huge time saver. And uh, I would encourage you to, to take advantage of that. Again, we can look at, uh, you know, let's say we click uh, over here to Elgin. Again, it'll search, it'll take you to Elgin and you'll be able to do the same thing on Elgin's site. If we go to Reliance, you know, same idea. It'll take a second to load. What it's doing is it's searching Reliance and it's going to go to the John Deere 42339, and you can look up what in parts they have for it. So very handy feature. It will save you time. So I would encourage you to, to, to look that up and, and have a peek at that. So other things that Process Pro does, and this is a, a good situation for, you know, a lot of times you'll get a component in the shop and you can tell it's a crankshaft, but you really have no idea what it fits. You were just told, uh, you know, the parts driver dropped it off and said, here you go, uh, they'll call you later. 
and you're like, ah, oh, I'd really like to get this tag marked so I can get figure out, you know, what it is and, and who it's for and that kind of stuff. So you probably know who it's for because you recognize the parts driver, but you have no idea what this component is. Well, Process Pro has the ability, and I'm just going to click dashboard again, to do casting searches as well as it can search by component and size. So really, really handy feature. So let's say, for example, you, you know, you've, you kind of wipe some of the grease off and you can see it's got an excellent casting number, it's fully intact, and uh, you can kind of search it that way. So let's say, for example, um, uh, it's, it's a cylinder head we got on the bench, a pair of heads, for example, and they end and you can see that, oh man, those last four, three digits, I can see those really good, super clear, and they say 049, or 049 is the last three digits. Well, we know that that's the, you know, what it ends with, because those are the last three digits. You could do begins or all, but, but let's go, we could, those three that we've got end with. And the casting type, we know it's a sonar head. I got a pair of them and they're sitting there on the bench. Okay, now if you search that, Process Pro is going to go through its database and it's going to look for every single head that we have that ends in 049. And from here, it's basically telling us that there is four pages worth because we can only load so many engines per page on the screen. Otherwise, it would fill the screen up too much. So here's how I break it down. Well, this is telling me that, okay, well, we've got some Buick heads here that the 2.2 that end in 049, but I know this is a pair of V8 heads. I mean, this, it's, this is a no brainer. I got a pair of them and there's eight cylinders. So all we need to do is just cruise through the different pages. Okay, well, yeah, we've got a few here. These are still four cylinders, V6 is now, mine's a V8. Ah, here we go. Okay, oh, 5.7 liter. So you could click on that, open it up and go, and then look at some of the head specs, for example, like maybe look at head diameter or head thickness and go, yep, that's the head I'm looking for, or maybe not. Maybe we need to keep searching through and, you know, um, Ah, this is looking more like it. Okay, so you click on this 454, it'll take you right from the casting number to the specifications page, like I just opened up. And now I can grab my caliper, for example, and I can start checking a few things. So, you know, I, I can start measuring things like, um, you know, different things within the head, uh, you know, maybe the spring installed height, you know, that kind of stuff, and try to narrow down whether this is the cylinder head that I've got and do it that way. Uh, so Process Pro has the ability to do that by casting number. So another thing that we can do um, with Process Pro is, and sometimes, especially the newer engines, the casting numbers are not very legible and they're, you know, they're 40 digits long. So it's really difficult to narrow it down. So what we did with Process Pro, and this is a new feature as well, is that we added a feature to be able to look up information by size. So Here's an example. Once you click on this uh, search here, if we have no idea, let's say we can't even recognize if it's a Ford, you know, a, a Shibura, we don't know if it's an AMC, we have no idea. You'll go down and you'll click all, so that Process Pro is gonna look up every single manufacturer. You're gonna choose select section. So in this particular case, uh, we know that it's a cylinder head. And probably the easiest thing to measure when you got this thing on the bench and it's still all together, I usually like to grab a caliper and measure valve head diameter. That's usually my first go-to when I'm trying to recognize a head. And let's say on the, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm getting like a point, you know, uh, basically 2.02 um, on for a measurement on that intake valve, for example. Now, if I search that, Process Pro is going to look for every particular head that every we have for every manufacturer. And in this case, it's coming up with 125 results. So that's a lot. That's a lot to thumb through. Um, so, but it's, at least it's an option. I mean, we can, if we really can, we can try to narrow it down. What I like to do sometimes is roll the dice, take my chances a little bit and go, you know what? That really looks like a Chevy emblem on there. I kind of has that look like this might be a set of small block Chevy heads. So you can just go ahead and go from all to Chevrolet and choose search. And Process Pro then is gonna narrow it down to, that's better, three results. So what it's saying is that there's three different small block Chevy engines that we have listed here that have a 2.02 .02 diameter intake valve. So you can go ahead and try and narrow it down that way. And of course you can do that, not necessarily with head diameter. I mean, if you wanna do it through 
you know, head thickness, uh, free length of the valve. I mean, all that kind of stuff, you can try and search it that way. So there is some options there to do that and search it. So kind of an advanced search feature, but at least you can try and recognize the head that you have and, and kind of go from there. So um, another really handy feature there to, to, to be able to play with. Something else that we have within Process Pro um, that I like to, I mean, I use this tool all the time is I used to click the shop tools tab here. And for example, um, I'd be building a stroker engine. So Process Pro has a compression ratio calculator built into it. And what you can do is uh, as long as you know some basic information, you know, you're gonna be able to then take Process Pro and have it help you calculate what the compression ratio is gonna be. So um, let's say for example, you are you know you wanna do a mock-up build on a Chevy and it's gonna be a 383. So we know that we're gonna, our bore diameter, we're gonna bore it to 30. We know that we got this brand new aftermarket crankshaft sitting there and we've ordered a 3.750 stroke and we're doing that. We know that it's gonna be eight cylinders Head CCs, brand spanking new pair of aluminum heads on the bench, and we've had our tech CC them to make sure that they match what the manufacturer said, and these are gorgeous. They're 72 CC, everything's looking good. Piston dome CCs, so we can play with this just a little bit. Maybe in this case, um, you're, you're just looking through the piston manufacturer's catalog, and you're trying to figure out a good piston for it, because maybe you're trying to achieve a, an 11 to 1 compression, but with the combination that you're building, you're not 100% sure whether that's going to work out with this piston. Most piston manufacturers do have uh, the CC value of the dish or the dome. As you can see there, Process Pro is telling you for a dish. So example, even if it has four valve reliefs, we consider that to be a dish value uh, or a dome. For the dome, you'll put a minus sign. For a dish, you won't put a minus sign. You'll just leave it. So let's say in this case, this, this particular piston I'd like to use is five cc's. Our head gasket thickness, uh, most, again, head gasket manufacturers right in the catalog will tell you how, what the compressed thickness is of that gasket. Um, let's say we don't know our bore diameter. Uh, deck height, maybe we're not quite there yet, but let's say uh, on dry assembly, you know, the piston was 25 thou down the hole. And uh, we know that we might want to deck the block a little more, but at least we can calculate this. So based on this information that we put in, if we calculate that, what Process Pro then is going to do is it's telling us with the information we've in, put in, in, into, Pro, into the calculator, our compression ratio is going to be 10.53 to 1. It also gives us a little bit more information that we need here as well. Okay, that's cool. So I was kind of, again, my customer was shooting for 11 to 1, for example. I'd really like to get to that 11 to 1. How am I going to get there? Well, we could change pistons. That would be one. We could, you know, go for a different piston. Maybe the easiest would be we've got these heads. We've got them in the shop. We've got the tooling to machine them. We could surface these heads and maybe get uh, get the c compression that we're looking for. So Process Pro, really cool feature. We've got this slide rule here for compression calculator. And, okay, it tells you, all right, well, what happens? What kind of compression ratio am I going to have if I take 12 thou off these heads? All right, now we're jumped up to 10.83. Hey, we're getting closer. Okay, 16 thou off these heads. All right, we're really getting close. So probably around 20 thou, I'll bet. We're pretty close. So 18 to 20 thou, we got to take off these cylinder heads, and we're 11 to 1 in compression. So uh, that's kind of one way to do it. So the calculator will kind of tell you that, and um, very, very handy feature. Uh, use that, again, for a lot of stroke builds, you know, and that kind of stuff. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. So that's there for you to use and take advantage of, and we encourage you to do that. All right. Well, we're, um, I've tried to show you as much stuff as I can. Uh, again, there's a lot of advanced features to Process Pro. I don't want to take up a whole bunch of your time today. I don't want to use up uh, a ton of time. Uh, I try to keep it within an hour. I know a lot of you want to get back into the shop and, uh, and do stuff. So we have a little bit of time today. Uh, we can do a little bit of Q&A. And, um, um, and that kind of stuff. And before we get there, there is just one other thing I did want to show you there. I, I wanted to show you the tech bulletin tab. Sorry about that. And cause this is one place that you're going to go to as well. I'll only just take a second here. The tech bulletin tab gives you the opportunity to search through over 3000 technical bulletins that we have produced already. Once you've clicked on that tab, you can then narrow down a filter. So in this example, 
let's say I'm working on an older 235 Chevy, for example, and those things always came with rope seals, and I'm, I'm hoping that maybe there's a technical bulletin that'll give me a neoprene or a rubber seal alternative. So I, rather than go through all 3,000, you'd have to be, you know, you have a lot of time in your hand to do that. You can try and figure out what's in the title. So if we just go rope seal and put that in the title and click search, Process Pro then is going to narrow down and say, you know what, we do have a bulletin about rear main rope seal alternative. And if we click on it, now it opens up and gives all the different manufacturers alternatives for uh, a rope seal. So that's an option. So that that you want to do that within the bulletins tab. You know, another one is, for example, um, if we type in balancing, because uh, maybe we're looking for a bulletin that may have a reciprocating percentage for an engine that we're working on. And, uh, you know, we've got something really oddball and we'd sure like to know if it has that. So Process Pro, it'll take you to that technical bolt. And so, again, maybe you got a BSA motorcycle in the shop. Your customers ask you to balance it. It's going to tell you that, you know what, the reciprocating percentage for that particular model is going to be 61%. So we do have bulletins on that. So that's kind of how you'll narrow down your bulletins um, rather than looking at them all. Keep in mind your bulletins that are engine specific are in the lookup. So if I click, again, if I go back to maybe this Ford Transit, just so you know, so there's no confusion there, and we go back to that Ford Transit, this technical bulletin is related to this engine, okay? When we go to this bulletin tab, what that means, that's gonna be related to all 3,000 or over 3,000 that we have. So you're gonna to wanna to try and narrow that down. So again, you can do things like, uh, maybe in the text you could type in, you know, uh, something like a, a coolant leak, you know, or something like that. And uh, you can go ahead and search that. And it's gonna find that, you know what, we have 105 that are all related to coolant leaks. So you can kind of narrow it down. You can see how that works there and narrow it down. So. Um, that's how you use that bulletins tab. So again, I, I've covered a lot of stuff. Uh, I know I kind of had to go fast to squeeze it within an hour and uh, I wanted to you know, try and cover as much as I can. We do have a tutorial section here. So if there was something that I didn't cover today, you can literally click tutorials and that's gonna take you, uh, it's like a YouTube page and it has all the different uh, little two to three minute snippets of Process Pro in different sections. So that's there for you to use and uh, as well as we have webinars. So if you go to our website, we've done previous webinars on Process Pro like we've done today. We have intro ones as well as advanced ones. So depending on where you are with your learning of the program, you can take advantage of that. Uh, and those are webinars. And again, they're on our, on our AERA website. You just go to the tech tab, you'll choose webinars and you can see them all there as well as our YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and type in automotive engine rebuilders, it'll take you to our YouTube channel. And from there, you'll see every webinar that we've done, whether it be our technical webinars, you can also see our Process Pro webinars. So those are there. So they're just another way to, uh, to learn from from there. So those are, are there for you to use. Um, what I'll do, and again, I would encourage everybody, if you have any questions on Process, you know, let's do it now. Uh, we can answer any questions you've got, or we don't mind on the tech line. If you have a few minutes, we can, we can also help you there. So it's totally up to you. Right now, I'm going to go back to, uh, to Steve and Amanda, and uh, we'll answer any questions you've got. So thank you, everybody, for today, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully get good use of the program. So thanks again, and I'll go back to Steve and Amanda. All right. Thanks, Rob. A uh, few questions here for you guys. Uh, I'll leave it up to you and Steve who's going to answer what. Um, is there a limit to the number of pictures I can add to the casting number section of PROCESS? That's a good question, and there's there's really not. Um, I think we've set it, we've put in up to 10 uh, and really haven't gone beyond that because that's a lot of pictures of a casting uh, component like a cylinder head or cylinder block. So I know you can go up to 10. Um, I really don't think there's a limit, but I would probably stick right around 10 to 12 somewhere in there. All right. Uh, next question here is, what does it mean when it says reported by a specification? Yeah, that's a good question. You might see some of that um, 
throughout the program there uh, where we'll list a spec and after that it'll say reported. What that actually means is one of our members has it given that or supplied that specification to us and it's not supplied by the OE. So what we'll do is we'll put reported next to that and then we'll try to verify that as we get more uh, machine shops working on that component, sending in specs, and then we'll verify it. And then once we know it's verified, we'll take that reported out of there. But reported means it came from a member who took a measurement for us. Perfect. Um, next up here is uh, why are some of the specification boxes empty, like valve stem height, for example, on some engines? That's a real common question that we do get on the tech line. Um, stem height is hardly ever supplied by the OE. Yeah, we take the majority of our specs from OE service manuals or service information. So being that that is not supplied by them, you'll see that box empty some of the time. And that's where the previous question reported, that's where we get a lot of those uh, specifications from is our members who take those specs and measurements and send them in to us. So if you're using the program and you do see an empty spec like that and you're working on a cylinder head and you take a stem height measurement, please send that to us or give us a call uh, so we can record that. And then once we get a couple more uh, uh, specifications sent to us on that cylinder head, we'll be able to verify it. All right, a couple more here. Um, why can I find my engine in process, but I can't find the vehicle model it matches to? Uh, that, that's another good question. Um, and I'll probably just start by saying that the engine is probably in process, but in different countries, it's used in different vehicles, vehicle models. So we don't have all that information uh, filled out. So probably the best thing to do on a situation like that is to take your make um, and your leader and, and search it that way. Uh, try not to fill in the model so much because you'll probably get a better search results if you use make, leader, or even a year. Um, but again, the, the biggest issue there is that engine is used in 10 or 15 different models throughout the world, and we may only have it in five or six. So using the make and the leader is probably your best option. All right. And... If I fill out the process specification request, how long do I have to wait to get a response? So if you fill that out and hit send, that is emailed directly to all five techs at once. So we all get it. And I would say that you'll have a response back to you. Uh, we try to get back to you within 30 minutes. That's the that's kind of our code here is we, we try to respond back in 30 minutes. So whether or not we have the answer or not, whatever technician took that email uh, and took that request over, they will get back to you within 30 minutes, one way or another, with the information or just to let you know that we are still working on it. All right, and we did have one more that came in here. Um, what should we do if we find an engine that is known to be an interference engine, but Process Pro does not have that information? Yeah, that get back, gets back to just sharing information with us. Uh, so feel free to email us, um, send in a specification request that, hey, you know that this engine is an interference engine. Um, just let us know that it is, and then we'll get that switched on our, uh, our dashboard there. And then that engine will go from uh, green to red. Perfect. And that's all we have for questions. If you guys do have any other questions you think of, um, you can go ahead and email us and we'd be more than happy to get those answered for you. Or you can always call the tech line. Um, real quick, I'm just going to wrap up a few things here before we let you go for the day. Uh, as Rob mentioned earlier, all our webinars can be found on Process. If you go out to YouTube and just type in AERA Engine, our page should pop up out there. And we've got everything from the webinars we've had to those Process Pro tutorials are out there. Um, lots of great information. And make sure to subscribe, because if you subscribe, then you'll know when we post new videos. And I always get those new webinars up there within a matter of days. And then lastly, um, obviously, thank you for attending. Uh, when you leave today, there will be a survey that pops up. Take a moment, fill it out, let us know how we're doing, if you had any questions for us, any of that kind of stuff. 
Um, you can also contact anyone at the AERA team by calling 815-526-7600. Our techs can be reached at tech at AERA.org. And then you will also see that my email, Rob's email, and Steve's email are all listed there. So again, we appreciate everyone's time today. We know it's sometimes hard to duck away from the shop for an hour, but we truly appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend with us, and we hope you have a great rest of your week.